Isn't it lovely coming into the room with that beautiful music going on? So we just love and appreciate you guys, big bunches. Yes. Okay, good morning. I'm Ann, and join me in the welcome statement, and then I'm going to share with you that we're going to do things a little bit differently today and maybe ongoing. So let's say together our opening statement. There is only one presence and one power active in my life, and in the universe, God the good, omnipotent. And so, um, again, a little bit different order, so I'm going to be glancing at this. What else is new? <laughs> We're gonna do the meet and greet first. So now, keep sitting until I tell you to go, okay? We're gonna do the meet and greet and this is your opportunity. You don't have to hug. You don't have to kiss. But we'd like for you to just say hello, meet your neighbor, welcome everybody who's in the room. Let's do that and do it very quickly right now. everybody okay enough already <laughs> I will all right thank you that was so joyful I loved watching it from up here wasn't that great all right, so now, again, we're doing things differently. We're going to move right into the announcements right quickly, so we're not doing those later in the service. And Deb Stovall has a few things to share. Thank you, Miss Ann. First of all, Divine Sisters Retreat, those of you that have not paid yet, stop by the green table. You'll see the, our gold sign for the retreat and pay your balance to Monica. We'll be taking money today. Second item is that we're starting a spiritual study group, discussion group, and we're going to use the 12 steps as our material. Um, Mary Chandler and I are going to be facilitating the group. I have 35 years in Al-Anon, and she has 25 years. So you'll be led by uh, some experienced people, but we're not going to do sponsorship. We're not going to be working through formally through the 12 steps, and it's going to be more of a discussion group, both of us know what it has done for us, that it has evolved our souls in a mighty way. And you do not have to be from an alcoholic family or any of that to come and study the 12 steps. So we welcome you every Tuesday night from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And we're hoping that you'll want to go to dinner afterwards. So kind of a social group and discussion group. Thank you. Okay. All right. So... Um, this is one of my favorite parts. It's the first Sunday in June. What happens on the first Sunday? Birthdays, anniversary. So if you have a birthday or an anniversary or just an extremely special uh, event coming up in the month of June, please raise your hand. And let's give them a round of applause. Yes. Good. <clears throat> Good. How many of you are actually Geminis? Raise your hand again. Well, must have been a lot of anniversaries because only three Geminis raised their hands. All right. So um, today, as always, after the service, there'll be coffee and conversation in Fellowship Hall. And if you happen to be new to Unity, if you've just come today for the first time or just recently, there will be a welcome table in Fellowship Hall where you can sit and visit with long-timers, other people who, who've been in Unity for a while that will share information with you. So um, after her talk today, Esther will be having a special workshop based on her book, Soul Recovery, 
The workshop will be in person and is titled The Healing Code of Forgiveness, Freedom from Shame and Trauma. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Good morning, Unity. It's been like 20 years since I've been here. I'm so, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be here. So I wanted to let you know the offerings um, that I bring this weekend. Uh, in addition to the talk, so the workshop this afternoon is the Healing Code of Forgiveness, Freedom from Shame and Trauma. And the, my talk today is the roadmap home to your authentic self. And it's very difficult, would you not say, to connect to your authentic self, to connect to your freedom, to connect to your peace of mind when you are harboring unconscious shame and trauma that has never been healed. So in this workshop today, how many of you know about tapping, EFT? We're gonna be doing some that, we're gonna be doing some deep inner child work, we're gonna be doing some forgiveness work so we can just start to clear that energy that has been blocking you from your highest and authentic self. So that is um, this afternoon. I also have books in the lobby, Soul Recovery, 12 Keys to Healing Dependence, and I'm so glad that Deb mentioned 12 Steps because Soul Recovery bridges the gap between the fundamental spiritual principles of the 12 Steps and Unity Principles and some of the latest developments in brain science so that we can lift our vibration to that place where we were created to be. I tell people, you may have been born into dysfunction, but you were created out of greatness. Can I get an amen? amen. All right, and I will also be here tomorrow. If anyone, after the talk or after the workshop, you're like, you know what, I really wanna spend some one-on-one -on -one time with Esther in a private session, I'm, uh, please come and sign up at the back table after service, and, or just give me a hug. So peace and blessings. Good, okay. Good. thank you, Esther. Uh, just so that you will know, the um, after service class is $40 a person, and if you do want a private session with Esther, it is $175 an hour. So you'll squeeze a lot into an hour, I'm sure, okay? So um, next Saturday, Family movie times June the 8th, this coming weekend. Uh, it starts at 6.30, it's over about 9. We're going to be watching the Pixar classic Monsters, Inc. As I reminded you last week, if you have little monsters who are coming to see the film, you must stay with them, okay? It's not a babysitting thing, okay? So um, Another new class at Unity of Dallas, Quantum Living Process class taught by Al Mahesh. Al, where are you? Right back there, wave your hand, Al. Okay, great. So I'm excited about this class, I'm taking it. A transformational 21-day quantum living process weaves together the latest research, blending science, psychology, and spiritual tools. Uh, registration is open on the event calendar in the e-news with class times and more details. Uh, this hybrid class starts Saturday, June 15th and runs through Saturday, July 6th. So Al, is the only live class next Saturday? Is it Saturday? They can do hybrid as well? And from then on, it's hybrid. Got it, okay. So the class price is $95 plus $25 for the workbook. And now, here's going to be the Texas version of this young man's name. Aaron Gallegos. Did I say it somewhat right? Yes. <laughs> Come on up. I'm just going to call him Aaron. That's really Texan. <laughs> yes. I'm Aaron Gallegos. I'm one of the chaplains, as you can see, but I'm also one of the members of the Spanish ministry or the um, Unity in Español here at Unity of Dallas. And I wanted to announce that on the 29th of June, we're going to have a Loteria night, which is like a bingo night, but it has a little spin-off um, of uh, Loteria. So that, that's important. And remember that every Sunday, at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, we do have a Spanish service. If you have any families, uh, friends, or anybody who wants to come over and join us in Spanish for the uh, full ministry in Spanish of unity, you are more than welcome to bring him back. Or even if you think you speak Spanish, you're more than welcome to do that too. So just be mindful of that. And I think that that's, a, that's about it. And, uh, Thank you, 
you, sir. You're welcome. All Thank right. You. Okay. <laughs> so everybody I've talked to who has attended this have had the best time ever, and you learned a little Spanish. Aaron, here's my Spanish. Una taza de agua caliente con limón. That's the only thing I learned when I was in Mexico, a cup of hot water with lemon. <laughs> All right, and with that, our music team is up. Yep, everybody's gonna be up. Let's join together in song, shall we? Together we sing. Together we sing. I'm your chaplain this morning, and I want to remind you that chaplains are available to you um, after the service for prayer. Uh, we'll be in the hallway towards Myrtle Hall this morning because uh, the chapel's occupied. Um, yes, and we also are available uh, for prayer requests, so if you've got a prayer request, put it in a prayer box. We're available for hospital visits, so just let uh, the church know if you need something along those lines, and and we'll answer that call. And uh, now I would like for you to join me in saying our daily word. Optimism, optimism colors my world with love. And in that spirit, I'd like to invite you into a moment of prayer. If you're comfortable closing your eyes, I invite you to do so. Otherwise, soften your gaze, begin to tune out the outer world and moving into that inner space that inner sacred space where the mind and the heart become one, one with the one power and the one presence that is active in every cell of our being, that one power and one presence that brings us that spirit of optimism and positivity that assures us that we have enough love, we have the health that we need, we have the joy, we have the wisdom to make the right choices. We tune into that spirit that opens the eyes of our heart to the knowledge that there is enough, that we are enough. I am enough. I am one with all that is. And there is no greater joy than that knowledge of that truth. We see all being done in perfect divine order. And we are grateful, grateful, grateful. And together say, Amen. We're going to continue with another song. Feel free to stay seated during this one. Use it as a meditation if you'd like. If you know it, sing along. Sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face.
it's the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with that you will receive when you know the Spirit's fullness and believe Lord, I want to profit when you say I am going to walk with Spirit all the way you often enough. You guys are amazing. All of you, our music team, amazing. Thank you, thank you. So I'm excited to introduce Esther Nicholson. Pardon me for having to use her bio. She has inspired thousands with her keynotes at conferences and spiritual events and centers, including ANTN Unity Village, the Agape International Spiritual Center, Unity Churches, and CSL centers all across the country. She hosted talk shows on both Unity and Hay House. A gifted vocalist, Nicholson's musical career includes worldwide tours, you ready? With Rod Stewart, Bette Midler, appearances on Oprah, the Tonight Show, The View, Good Morning America, and The Ellen DeGeneres Show. We have a celebrity among us. Yeah. In, uh, today, her topic is the healing of forgiveness, freedom from shame and trauma, as you heard. Uh, she is the author of Soul Recovery, 12 Keys to Healing Dependence, is a recovery specialist employing spiritual practices to uncover and heal the root causes responsible for patterns of dependence. Her comprehensive teaching has been heralded the 12 steps for the rest of us. Those of us who are not in the 12 step program, but maybe we've been. As it guides attendees in core concepts and integrated practices that apply to everyone, even those who have no history of substance abuse or experience with the 12 steps. Esther Soul Recovery unifies the spiritual core of the 12 step anonymous recovery program, broadly accepted spiritual practices and a deeply compassionate program. Her presentation of this healing model is an opportunity not to be missed. So it would serve all of us well, I'm sure, to be at that workshop after the service. And so let's welcome Esther Nicholson. Oprah, Ellen, I'm here at Unity. That's yes, right. that's what's happening. So before we get into this first song, it's about change. 
And we all understand that when change comes into our lives or we are being asked to stretch and grow beyond our comfort zone, how many of you have experienced that before? Maybe you're experiencing it right now. We're getting ready to come up on an election year that's going to create change that's asking all of us to stretch and grow. So when it gets scary, when like, I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what's on the other side of this change. And I just like to share from my own experience that the best you, the next version of you is on the other side of whatever change you're going through. Can I get an amen? Everything must change. stays the same Everyone change No one and nothing goes unchanged The young become the Mysteries will unfold Cause that's the way of time No one and nothing goes unchanged There are not many Except rain comes from the clouds, sun lights up the sky, hummingbirds do fly. Winter turns to spring. A wounded heart will heal. I know what I'm talking about, but never much too soon. No one and nothing goes unchanged. The Mysteries, I promise you, they will unfold, cause that's the way of time. No one and nothing goes unchanged, yeah. God is real. Can I get an amen? Come on, y'all. And the rain comes from the clouds every day. The sun lights up the sky. Even when you can't feel it, you gotta believe it. I know, I know, I know. The rain comes from the clouds. God will never leave you alone. She will never forsake you, no. Oh, the rain. I know, I know, come on, the rain comes from the clouds, sun lights up the sky, hummingbirds do fly, everything must change. Oh, I'm so grateful, yes 
I am. We don't get to stay the same. Cause that's the way of time. Everything. Change into what? Change into that which we were created to be. Change back into our true innate identity of wholeness. So I want to talk to you today about the roadmap home to your authentic self by way of recovery. And most of us think of re recovery typically from the perspective of we're recovering from something. We're recovering from an illness. We're recovering from a crisis. We're reco recovering from an addiction. We're recovering from something. But I don't want to talk about recovering from anything today. I want to talk, first of all, the definition of recovery is the recovery of something that has already been established, but that has gotten lost. Can I get an amen? So we want to talk about the recovery rediscovery and reawakening to the truth of who you are. So in Genesis, in the beginning, in scripture, when God, when it says that God created the heavens and the earth, it looked around at everything that it created and said, behold, it is good and very good. Yes? I just want you to put your hands on your heart and say, I'm good and very good. Sometimes I forget. But I'm ready to remember that I'm good and very good. So God, based on that scripture, didn't look around at the oceans that it had created and said, the tides aren't coming in quite the way I wanted them to, so I'm going to name the ocean shame. It didn't look at the sun, the moon, and the stars and say, you're not quite orbiting the way I demanded, so I'm going to name you not good enough. It didn't, it didn't create the flowers and the trees and, and the, the minerals and all of that and say, you're not doing it quite perfectly enough, so I'm going to traumatize you. And it didn't create any of us and say, oh, because you think a certain way, because you look a certain way, or because something is going on in your life, I'm going to name you unworthy. It says, I'm, I name you regardless of your experience, regardless of what you're thinking, regardless of anything you have ever done, I name you good. And here's the wonderful thing about the universe, God, high, higher power, or whatever it is that we choose to call it. It only sees you as itself. It only sees the truth about you, yet the laws of the universe can only reflect back to you what you think about yourself. Ouch! That there's this presence and power within us that sees us only as perfect on our worst days. Yet, the law, the impersonal laws of the universe can only reflect back to us what we think about ourselves. And how do these thoughts about ourselves come to be? Because like I said earlier, we, were, we may have been born into dysfunction. We may have been born into an environment, uh, a familial system, a belief system of otherness and separation, which then we indoctrinated those beliefs and took on this false sense of identity. But you were created out of greatness. And that's what recovery is about. It's about remembering, rediscovering, and reawakening to who you really are. I heard this story a long time ago about this little boy who begged his parents to allow him to spend a few moments alone with his infant baby brother. 
and the parents finally relented and said, okay, we're going to let you spend a moment alone with your infant baby brother, but we're going to be standing right outside the nursery so we can see what you're doing in there. And they stood outside the door, and they heard this little three-year-old say to his baby brother, will you tell me who I am? Will you remind me of who I am because I'm starting to forget? I remember when I started to forget. I remember, I was like five years old when I started kindergarten, and all of a sudden, I wasn't the center of the, my parents' universe anymore. All of a sudden, I was kicked out into this foreign world where, where kids were bullying me and picking on me, and it shocked my system into frag, fragmentation. Yes? When we're traumatized, we are fragmented. We, we, we take on all of these defense mechanisms that becomes our personality to protect ourselves, yet that protection that no longer serves us is now limiting ourselves. Can I get an amen? So I remember that there was a time in my life when I thought if I looked good enough, if I was at the perfect weight, if I had the perfect career, if I had the perfect amount of money, that that made me good enough, that that meant that I had arrived. How many of you felt that way before? But I soon discovered that no matter how much I colored it up, sucked it up, toned it up, that if I was walking around with those deep-seated illusions of unworthiness and not enoughness, that those, dis, though, that unconscious way of being, that they were making my decisions without my conscious permission. How many of you have made decisions without your conscious permission? It just feels like you're being driven by another force. Am I the only one? No. no. But that other force, which really in the mind of God is not power, and Jesus said to Pilate, unless you are coming at me from the power of God, you have no power over me. But most of us, we have to grow into that understanding. We have to practice our way into that understanding. But until we do, it might feel like one foot is on the accelerator, trying to move forward, trying to grow, trying to change, and the other foot is on the brake, and you're pushing simultaneously, and you keep pushing and pushing and pushing, but what you're actually doing is spinning. How many of you felt that way before? That, the root cause of that, what is the root cause of that? The root causes of that are those illusions, that false identity of not being enough, that false identity of shame that you carry, that we carry deep in our unconscious mind, that deep unhealed trauma that we carry in our nervous systems. Our nervous systems operate at four different modes, rest, fight, flight, or freeze. Most of the world is operating in fight, flight, or freeze 24-7 every day. Rest. What does rest mean? It means peace that passeth understanding. It means calm. It means feeling safe in your own beingness. Can I get a name mended feeling safe? Right? Most of the planet, we walk around in this generalized anxiety, and we don't even know what we're anxious about. How does unworthiness and feelings of not being good enough, how does that show up in your life? It shows up as you saying yes when you really mean no. How many of you have done that before? It shows up with not having healthy boundaries or having no boundaries at all. It shows up as accepting something in your life that you know on a soul level is too small for you but you haven't grown in consciousness to the frequency of your greatness, of your bigness that is there all the time, just waiting for you compassionately. So when we see those places within ourselves where we're stuck, 
where we just can't seem to move forward, I want you to repeat after me, compassion. I want you to put your hands on your tummy. This is where my boo is. And I say to her, patience, sweetheart. Say patience. But intention. Because time doesn't heal all wounds. How many of you have heard that saying before? Time heals all wounds. Time doesn't heal all wounds. Consciousness heals wounds. Intention to be your highest and best self and doing the spiritual practices. And, and I tell people all the time, because I have a lot of healing modalities that I use and all of that. And I tell people, don't worship the process. Worship that which it brings you to. God your highest self, the truth of your being. Worship that. These are just the tools to get you out of the way. These are just the tools to allow your ego, and the ego's gotten a bad rap because the ego is still God, because there's nothing that's not God. Can I get an amen? The ego is just the part of you that has forgotten that you're God. And so the practices that we engage in, the healing modalities that we do, it's simply comforting the ego mind into surrender. God doesn't need you to pray. God doesn't need you to surrender. God doesn't need you to do anything. God is. Say it, God is. But the ego mind, that wounded child, that is within a lot of us, or all of us, or most of us. All the prayer that we do, all the meditation that we do, all the tapping that we do, all the inner child work that we do, we're rocking that baby to safety. So that she or he can finally say, that's all we're doing is bringing ourselves back to safety so that we can connect to that which is the real safety. Yes? Saying yes when you mean no. I remember when I was on the, a call with a um, potential client, and I was feeling really good that day, really spiritual. And I was feeling so good. And all of a sudden, when we got into the negotiations, my energy just dropped from here to like here. I was like, whoa, what is that? I touched myself on my tummy and I said, what's the matter, boo? And she said, I'm afraid to ask for what I want. How many of you have been afraid to ask for what you want? Because unworthiness, the illusion of unworthiness, the illusion of not enoughness has convinced you that if you ask for what you want, that you're going to even lose that, and then you're going to end up with nothing. Uh, can I get an amen? How convincing, how brilliant is the ego, right? And then we buy it, and then we believe it, and then we reinforce that belief, we reinforce that pattern, and then we manifest it, and then we reinforce it, and then we manifest it, and then we reinforce it, and then we manifest it. So when I came to that realization that I was about to do that again, I stomped my foot on the floor, and I said, I cannot make decisions from that place anymore. I cannot make decisions from a place, from a consciousness of unworthiness anymore. I want you to repeat after me and say, I can't do it that way anymore. But here's the deal. I knew that I knew that I knew that I never wanted to do it that way again, but I also knew that based on my patterns, based on my habits, based on my unhealed trauma, that I didn't know how to not do it again. That's the first step of recovery. And I had to admit, I am powerless over this pattern, God. I am powerless over remembering who I am. I am powerless over it. And it's making my life unmanageable. How many of you can relate to that? The ego is powerless, but there is a power within you that is all power. So when I decided, okay, I'm going to go within my inner sanctuary, and I'm going to do the soul recovery work that I'm going to teach you about this weekend, and I'm not going to come out until I remember who I am. And when I came out of that prayer, when I came out of that tapping, when I came out of that divine communion, I was willing to leave the deal on the table. 
I want you to repeat after me and say, sometimes you got to leave the deal on the table. Because I knew when I came out of that communion with my divine self that if I left the deal on the table in the name of my self-value, in the name of my self-worth, in the name of my true identity, that even though it appeared that I was walking away with nothing, that the universe would fill that seeming void with the infinite something that is beyond your wildest imagination. Amen? Now, maybe some of you haven't experienced that before, but I've experienced walking away from something that felt on paper that, oh my God, it might be a really great opportunity. But in my gut, I knew that it wasn't. And I walked away in the name of my self-value, in the name of my self-God, in the name of truth. And I promise you, what, was, what filled that space was something that I never would have dreamt about or dreamed about in a million years. How many of you have experienced that? Only one? <laughs> That's getting out of the way so that the good that is already established as you can be revealed. When something amazing happens in your life, it's not because you've all of a sudden convinced God or influenced the universe to do something that it's not already doing. It just means that you've gotten out of the way enough to allow it to come through. But many of us are addicted to our thought patterns, our belief systems, our behavior patterns of not enoughness, unworthiness, shame, unhealed trauma, resentment, just trying to make it. And my question to you is what is it costing you? I think the cost is too high. It's costing you your joy, costing you your health, it's costing you your well-beingness. There's the placebo effect. When you take a pill and you so believe that it heals you, that it's your belief that actually heals you, and then there's this thing called the nocebo effect, that no matter how many doctors you go to, no matter how many thousands of dollars you spend on medical care, no matter how many, time, how many tests you take, you just can't get well. Because those unhealed emotions, I tell people, if you don't deal with your stuff, your stuff will deal, will deal with you. Addiction is when we are so attached that we have taken on that way of being as our identity. How many of you have clicked on Netflix to watch a movie and the next thing you knew you were watching a series? <laughs> and then three days later you come to, <laughs> and you're like, what happened? Well, that addiction, that pattern to procrastination, to avoidance, to distraction, because that lie is telling you that you're not good enough to step out into your dreams. So soul recovery, soul recovery. He restoreth my soul. In the 23rd Psalms, it says, he restoreth my soul, restores me back to that which I was created to be, soul recovery. And I had to create soul recovery or be the avenue, the channel for soul recovery to be created because at, I'm 37 years recovered now. But when I, thank you, when I created soul recovery, many years into long-term sobriety, into long-term recovery, I was dying. I was so tired of being scared every day. How many of you are tired of being scared every day? I was so tired of worrying every day. I was so sick and tired of my own thinking. Have you ever told yourself, shut up? Have you ever told yourself that? Right? Just shut up. So when I got into recovery 37 years ago and I had a spiritual experience, when I sat in the back of a cab and demanded that he take me to the drug dealer's house. And he looked into my eyes and said, young lady, please don't kill yourself today. A cosmic shift happened in my head. Hell parted, fog lifted, and I caught a glimpse of my wholeness. 
I caught a glimpse of who I was. That was the beginning of my journey to re because even in recovery after that, when I got those jobs with Rod Stewart, when I got those jobs with Bette Midler, when I got those jobs with Barbara Streisand, when I got those jobs with all those people, every single day, fraud. Every single day I was waiting for someone to say, oh, Esther, we just realized you're not good enough, you're fired. How many of you have gone through that before? Oh, me out. Because the, to the illusion of the false identity is cunning, baffling, and powerful. But there is a power within you that knows nothing about that. There's a power within you that we call God, that we call higher power, that doesn't know you as anything other than greatness, that, re that expresses through you as stepping boldly into your dreams, that steps boldly into your power without hesitancy, without second guessing yourself, and you know who you are. So what is the first step to soul recovery? Getting out of your own way. I want you to hold your fists like this, and I want you to think of something that you're just trying to fix and figure out right now, that you are just going into a brain coma trying to figure out how to fix this thing. Now I want you to inhale deeply, and I want you to figure it out. I don't have to fix it. I don't have to. Yay. Oh, God. And when we get out of the way like that, or whatever it takes us to get out of the way, and my mentor, Michael Beckwith, says the, the pain pushes until the vision pulls. And so there comes a time when you don't have to be pushed by crisis, by being on the floor in the fetal position, by being completely stressed out. You can be pulled by a vision of who you really are. And the second step of recovery says we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Well, you can't be restored back to something that was never the truth about you in the first place. Is that right? And then we make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understand him or it, whatever it is that we want to call it. And we, we have this saying where there's a will, there's a... But I like to say, with a, there's a will, there's a wall. So I've made a decision to turn all my walls. Just repeat after me. I've made a decision to turn all the walls that I've built against my good over to the care of God. And I like to tell people, because I tell this to myself, if the God of your understanding isn't expressing in your life as all good, as harmony, as peace, as love, as abundance, as prosperity, then it's time to get a new God or it's time to get a new understanding. Can I get an amen? amen. And it's okay to do either. Like there's no shame here. We're all growing. We're all at our different phases of development. You get to be rigorously honest with yourself and say, where am I really? And is this really okay for me? Is this how I really want to live in my head, in my anxiety, in my fear, not knowing who I am? Is that, is that really how I want to live out the rest of my life in this incarnation? And the moment that you say no, something starts to happen energetically. Will you start to align with that presence and power within you that is the answer that will direct you every step of the way? And then, of course, we continue with the rest of the steps and the rest of the inner child work and the rest of the processes which awaken us to the fact, just like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, that we never left our beds. We were just dreaming. But we awaken in our beds realizing, where I'm blind, now I see. Where I was lost, now I am found. Welcome home. There's no sweeter place to be. It's hot in here. Amen. Can I get an amen? I am good and very good. Just hit your chest and say, I am good and very good. Amen. Is this the next song? Okay.
sip of water. Where's your bottle? I'm going to get my sip of water. So, this next song I dedicate to Rod Stewart because he fired me. <laughs> what, 15 years ago now? Because I had reached an age and a weight that was no longer appropriate to sing Hot Legs Behind Rod Stewart. I just want to ask you, have you seen Rod lately? <laughs> That's just a joke. I am so grateful, and I saw him at a concert recently where I went backstage, and I'm, I said, thank you for kicking me out to my greatness. Thank you for doing for me what I couldn't do for myself. So I thank every man who's ever left me. <laughs> and I thank every job who's ever fired me, because this that I do today was the very thing I was terrified of. And God's like, this is you. This is what you do. You speak the word. So I dedicate this song to Mr. Rod Stewart. Let's go. Everybody get up on your feet. Let's party a little bit. Oh, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. May the good Lord be with you down. Every road you roam And may sunshine and happiness Surround you when you're far from home And may you grow to be proud Dignified and true And do unto others As you have done to you Be courageous and be brave. And in my heart, you will remain what? Forever young. That's Mr. Rod Stewart. Ha. Forever. May good fortune be with you. May your guiding light be strong. Build a stairway to heaven. Be a prince or a vagabond. And may you never love in vain. And in my heart, you will remain what? Oh, you sound good. So this is what I added to Mr. Stewart's song. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Young. Let me hear you say, come on, say, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, young. Ooh, there is laughter, there is peace in your heart. There is life, there is love forever. Forever young. When I finally fly away, I'll be hoping that I served you well. For all the wisdom of a lifetime, no one could ever tell. But whatever road you choose, God's right behind you. You cannot lose. Forever. Let me hear you say, oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, forever young. Come on now and sing it with me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, ever young. Break it down, break it down, break it down. Come on. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, oh forever young. Let me hear you say, oh yeah. Come on, say, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And this side over here, I want to hear you say, 
forever. Come on, y'all. Let me hear you say forever. Keep that going for me, because over here I need you to say, oh, yeah. Come on, y'all. workshop let's do this thing well that's a hard act to follow <laughs> so what a blessing you know those of you who are new maybe some of you new maybe somebody's first time it's different every Sunday now, have you noticed I mean because we have guest speakers different guest speakers sometimes we leave kind of solemn sometimes we leave kind of joyful Honey, we're leaving today on fire, on fire. Thank you, Esther. Wow, so this is the time in our service when we talk about our offertory blessing. I'm simply going to say to you today, thank you for supporting this building, the small staff that we have in the church. Thank you for volunteering and giving of your time, and thank you for giving of your treasure so that we can continue bringing in more Esther. Yes, yes. <clears throat> all right, and so with all of that, uh, we'll take up the offering, and Bob and the band are going to play us through. <clears throat> oh, would you like for me to do something else? Huh? Do what? No. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So while you're taking up the offering, Lisa would like to go ahead and uh, bring the new members to the stage. And we'll say together the offertory blessing. <laughs> Just when I was feeling forever young. <laughs> so together, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, Spirit. And say it like you mean it. So thank you so much, Esther. That was just amazing. And we've got some other special people to bring up on the stage this morning as well. So new members, if you could work your way up here. I would appreciate it. So we have had another membership class, and we do that a couple of times a year. So if you're interested in joining Unity and becoming part of our family, I mean, we consider you our family. You're like our cousins if you haven't joined, but we want you to be our sisters and our brothers and join us in making Unity of Dallas all that it can be. So we do that on an individual level, but we do it as a, a consciousness together as well. And part of how we do that is we become members. We join. We, we take that next spiritual step to um, making ourselves available to the greatness that Unity of Dallas can be. And I want to read you. I'm not going to read you this whole thing. I'll, however, there's a document that we have our new members sign. And I made some copies of this in case some of you may have joined years before we might not have been using this comprehensive thing. And I think this is going to stay in place, even with changes that are being made in our membership 
how we're doing things. I have a feeling most of this is going to stay. Um, our members promise to learn our teachings and practice them. They promise to um, support us with love. They promise to support us with prayer. They promise to support us financially. They promise to support us in volunteering. And then we say together at the end of every class, and I want you to take this to heart, Together with my fellow members and congregants, I am co-creating with God the ongoing dynamic life of Unity of Dallas. I recognize that together we help keep its doors open and expand its programs and services like we had today, thereby blessing and serving thousands of others like myself. Through membership in Unity of Dallas, I honor the spirit in me and the spirit at work through Unity of Dallas. And so we've got four people, and some of them are going to look familiar to y'all. <laughs> um, let's see. Let me get organized. I got my stuff all facing different ways. Okay. We've got, thank you, Carla Burns. And Carla has actually been at Unity of Dallas in previous years, and she's come back to us. And she's started volunteering and being a part of the Kitchen Angels. And yeah, we're super happy to have her reaffirm her membership with Unity of Dallas. And Haley Ferguson, if you've been in Deb's Tuesday class, you've probably met Haley. She helps out, sometimes teach him when Deb's not able to. And she's on an amazing path that I just learned about recently. And so we're gonna be seeing and hearing more from her in the future, like all over Unity. Elise Mahesh, you guys have been seeing Elise for years, and she's making the step she never thought she would make, and we're so happy to have you, Elise. And Linda Strobel, is, who was here back in the, like, I don't know, 90s, and she's come back, and she's joined up, and she's uh, working in the kitchen, and open to some new ideas. She's got some new ideas for us that she'll be presenting eventually. And um, yeah, we're just super excited to have all of y'all as part of our family. Yeah, we'll stay up here. Yeah. We're gonna stay up here with us song. for this peace song as you guys rise to your feet as we close our service, singing the peace song together. Hold hands as you're, as you're comfortable. Here we go. Let there be peace on <laughs> and let it begin with peace. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God our Creator. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow to take each moment forth into a new week, we take Esther's words with us. In summary, let go and let God, and let the people say, Amen. Amen.